Hello everyone. In today's video, I'm going to demonstrate for you how you can create a scene like this. I have a sci-fi aircraft with a drill and I have fire thrusters. And as you can see here, there's a movement going on on the fire area. In addition to that, there is a subtle animation of color and saturation for both the thruster fire and also the background. So I thought of this example as a good exercise to demonstrate two things. But before I tell you what I did, I want to ask you, if you're making drill animation and you're not a skilled 2D animator that can draw the drill frame by frame, what would you do to make a drill animation? Pause this video, think about it. Okay, now you're back. Let me tell you what I did. I used masking. I know it may sound kind of crazy or weird, but there's some sort of a trick that I came up with that made that effect to work. Let me show you how I created that effect with that drill. So let me take you into Procreate. All right, behold, this is my Procreate scene. Technically, this is the pattern that I'm going to be using to move behind the mask. So here is the pattern. This black area is the mask along with these details. These details actually are making a really interesting effect in order for that illusion to be successful. So here's the mask. I also have the thrusters. Typically you wanna have each one of these fire flames to be on a separate layer in order for you to have more control over it, but I wanna keep them to make it even more challenging so I can show you a really interesting way to do the rigging for it you're going to actually do a rigging for it and it's going to be easy and fun. Next I have the windshield. Now I want to show you something um, in addition to this whole demonstration. I like to throw little nuggets here and there for extra information. I'm going to reduce the opacity. Now we can see the, the pilot. But once I throw the scene into Procreate Dreams, the opacity is going to go to the max. So something to be aware of when you are working with some opacity it's not going to translate into procreate dreams the same way something to keep in mind and i have the aircraft or the sub whatever you want to call it on a separate layer and of course i have the background on a separate layer so i'm going to select all the layers that i need and before i import them into procreate dreams i need to go there and create a new scene so starting from scratch in procreate dreams select the layers that i need click and hold move quickly swipe up procreate dreams and drop now i'm going to arrange them the mask has to be on top of the pattern so in this demonstration i'm going to be focusing on masking grouping and organic rigging and animation so i have the scene here set up this way now i'm going to show you here right away how that mask is going to look i'll select the layer here click on mask layer mask so now i have only this area to show that pattern keep in mind something i mentioned in my previous video if you got the colors wrong and you got the mask flipped you can always click and hold mask and then invert so now i'm gonna be making the timeline movement here as you can see nothing's really going on and the reason why it's not really drilling is because i only need to make that pattern to move so let me show you here so i will need to do just a movement and you can see that kind of wobbly effect the wobbly effect is working especially effectively because of those little details that i created on the outside of the mask see that it's pretty fun so i'm gonna push it to the very left side here so I can animate it forward. So far there's no animation, no keyframes whatsoever. And I do have the flames. I'm gonna go into the windshield and apply some opacity. So I did cover the little problem you may have that even if you do have opacity, it wouldn't come with opacity, that's fine. I wanna cover something else, something that you need to change from the default if it's bothering you. If I click on the trigger, and go to filter and apply opacity and if i reduce the opacity that's going to look good and however i move the timeline it's not going to change because there's only one keyframe that is this one by default if you go to the preferences 
check this out add keyframe at start by default this is activated on so you want to turn it off because otherwise it would create a key in the very beginning and that's going to be pretty annoying so i like it this way and i'll keep it this way uh, in terms of the preferences now moving down into the aircraft i don't need to do anything with it and same for the background cool now i want to apply the animation first then i'm going to do the grouping for them this way the animation would apply locally and then I will make the animation for the flames and then I will package them into a group so I can move that whole group together while each one of those animation would take place. So let's get started with the pattern. Select on the very beginning of the pattern that is going to do the drill. Click on the action trigger, move, move and scale. Now I'm gonna move it all the way back till the end. Now, before I make the movement, I need to tap. Now, before I make the animation, I need to click tap, so it would record that animation. And then I can move that drill, texture, or pattern. And lastly, I want to consider changing the eases of that movement. Meaning, if I play it right now, it's gonna play like this. which may and may not work for your scene. So it's really important to define what kind of eases you want on that drill. So if it's drilling constantly, then I would go set all easings, go to linear. And now it's gonna be drilling constantly. If it's about to get drilling, then in that case, I would make it to ease in. This way, the animation is gonna look like this. It's gonna start really, really slow and soon is going to get into the drilling operation. So let's keep it this way. Okay, now I want to do the animation for the flame. This is where it's going to get even more fascinating. When I select on the action, there's an orange box here that you cannot see because of the background. So I'm going to hide the background. Now you can see that grid a little bit. If it's difficult, here's your reminder that you can always click on the time code at the lower left corner, click on background color, and you can even take it off so it would be transparent. Now, what I want to do to rig and animate the flame here, even though they're all both on the same layer, I can do a rigging that would work for both of them together in a way that doesn't really mush them together. So I'll click on the action trigger. Here's the effect that you're really gonna enjoy. Move, warp. And before I continue, I am definitely gonna make an in-depth video on this because it could get really complex and really confusing and very difficult to fix if certain animation doesn't go the way you want. So now what I want is to increase the grid because as you can see here, if I were to move this, it's gonna move both of them. If I wanna move this point here, it might be okay, but if I wanna move this kind of flame here, it's gonna move it, move the whole thing instead of just the tail end of it. So I'm gonna undo, go here, move, warp, and I'm gonna increase it all the way up so it's gonna add more control points. So now you can move this point without affecting this area here. You can even add kind of movement here to the tail or even here without hurting this area. So you can keep this area protected, you can just move these points here, right? Without hurting that base. So, how do we animate this? Remember in my first video, the perform button. This is gonna allow you to animate live as you're moving. It's gonna be moving the timeline. So, I'm gonna add uh, some movement here to this point. Keep in mind that it would exceed the time limit, so you can always just go back, so you can just ignore the fact that it would exceed sometimes. Also, the cool thing about it is that you can animate uh, based on the movement you're seeing. So as you're animating through the perform, you will be able to see the animation that's playing here, and you can, based on that, play by ear. And now I'm gonna be animating the flame here. And since it's tiny, it tends to have maybe bigger turbulence 
maybe more noticeable. All right. So right now, this is the animation that I have. And uh, to get rid of the extra frames, you can just click and hold, and it would snap till the end here. Another thing I want to throw to the mix, if you would like to preview certain animation, you're just wondering, what if it was faster? What if my movement was faster or slower? Would it look nicer? You can always go and change the properties into, let's say, 120 frames. It's going to be a lot faster. But let's take a look and see what it would look like if that's going to be the case. So, unusable, right? But it helps you a lot on really like figuring out if you want to make it faster, if it's worth it to make it slower. But remember to take off the perform because then every movement you make is going to get recorded and you don't want that to happen accidentally. So now that it's ready in terms of the animation, I am going to group them. And I'm going to show you now some tips on how to organize your groups and also how to work with groups uh, in general. So, you want to package, in this case at least, everything that you need to be moving simultaneously as one entity. So in that case, I want everything except the background. There's another thing that I want to do here is animating the colors, but I don't want to do that yet even though it is ideal to do it now, but I want to show you how you can later work after you group your items. Meaning, I just want to assure you that you don't have to do everything at the same time before you package stuff into a group. So, how do I group? I select this layer here, writing looking thing. I'm going to group all of these pieces, select them, click and hold, then group. There's a little problem that happens when we do that kind of uh, grouping or any changes to the timeline. We end up with empty tracks. So I'm going to go here and delete track. Now that I have them this way, I do have the background on a separate layer and I do have the group on a separate layer. Now let's talk about optimizing your tracks. Click and hold and then highlight gray for my background color. Now for this group here, I'm going to click and hold, highlight, and I'm going to choose blue because it's kind of flying in the sky. Okay, so why is this important? First of all, it's easier to detect right away what group is which. And this is only with two layers, so you might think it's kind of redundant, but when you have a bunch of layers, it's very important to color code your tracks. Here's another reason. Let's say you have a bunch of layers, or if you want to be zoomed out, away from the tracks. Check this out. They become really slim to the point where we cannot recognize them. However, if you do have color-coded these tracks, as you can see, it would still show you this to be in blue and this to be in gray or white. So that is another advantage for color-coding them. Additionally, it's more fun to keep everything organized. Okay, now with that said, now I have figured, oh wait, I forgot to animate the coloration of this flame. How do you go back to the subgroup components and edit them? You click on group, and then you go here into the flame, go to the very beginning, and say, if you select it this way, it's going to select those keyframes for the warp. If you want to add a new effect, you need to click on the track itself, click on action, filter, HSB, Hue, Saturation, and Brightness. And just like yesterday's video, I'm going to show you how I can animate the coloration of this flame and even the intensity of it. Before I animate, I am just going to test out what I want to do. So you can see here, adding some brightness is going to make it look cooler. Do I add more saturation? Uh, maybe. Here's the other thing. If you want to animate on the fly using the Perform, that's going to be cool and easy but let's say you want to correlate the saturation with brightness then in that case it may be better to just kind of do it manually and go key 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 and 
by that I mean like this you kind of set a key here let's say this is the um, the look you go to this frame click here add more saturation and add more brightness so now you can see they're kind of associated together uh, in other words it's easier for you to keep control over how they would look or how they would be animated together so from here now I demonstrated for you exactly what I meant now I can just go and do it just freely click here click on the perform and go into the saturation so now as you can see I was able to animate even though it was grouped together just by clicking on this triangle of the group you would be able to unfold it and get to the action of animating or editing the components inside with that said now to the final step which is animating the movement of this spacecraft go to the group select the action trigger move move and scale I'm gonna move it somewhere around here so I'm gonna start the movement this way okay and I'm going to click on tap on the corner and I can rotate it a little bit so what I want to do now is to animate it and to make it seem like it's going deeper how do I do that by shrinking the scale down that shrinkage is not gonna make it look realistic enough so what I need to do is I could animate the rotation a little bit now going all the way till the end click to add a keyframe move it here and then I'm going to scale it down and just to add more kind of life to it I'm going to reduce the angle of rotation so it would be rotating slightly adjusting upwards just a little bit and before I hit play you want to keep in mind that the eases would play an interesting role there so I may want to consider going with eases that would go maybe ease out because the ease out is going to make it slow down towards the end which of course is going to make it look like it's going deeper into the perspective and finally I want to make the drill movement to be more linear so I'll select the pattern click and hold on the move and scale track set all easings linear and here is the final result I plan on dedicating the next video for making lights and reflections on the windshield and by the way if you would like me to provide these materials for you to practice on let me know in the comments section so stay tuned and thanks for watching